Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, today is gonna to be my July favorites and flops. We're gonna be going through the products I've been using and loving all month long, as well as the products that might not have worked out so well for me. So if that's something you're into, make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week. And that is the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. Also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload, which is once again, three times a week. So if you wanna see my favorites and flops for the month of July, Keep on watching. All right, so first thing, this is not the first time I have worn a brick vampy fall lip. As far as I'm concerned, the season for fall lips has officially begun, and typically I do go in with a matte lip in the fall, but because it is still summer, I do want to keep a little bit of shine. So I've been taking the M Cosmetics Gloss in Ruby Wine, Every time I wear a vampy lip, just to add a little bit of that glossy shine, they are comfortable, they are long wearing, and they just wear so effortlessly. There's a nice amount of pigment. I'm just gonna build it up a little bit. I just find that they are so shiny. These are not the types of glosses that you can really wear on their own. You have to line your lips because if you take this all the way to the lip line, it will bleed a little bit. But if with this kind of gloss, you just have to line the lips and then just take this where you want it and be very careful because it will bleed if you don't line properly. So I put on a liner and a liquid lipstick today and I took this gloss and I went a little shy of the lip line just so that I didn't have any issues with feathering or bleeding. And I filmed a video, I edited that video, I'm here to film a second video and nothing has happened, it has not bled and it is exactly where I put it. So, so far so good, but I love this formula. I do have this gloss in like, I wanna say three different shades. I do wear them pretty regularly because they are beautiful pigmented glosses. And I don't really talk about it much here because on my channel I tend to focus on like the nudie sheer glosses or something that's just a little bit of plumping and out the door. These high pigment glosses, I might have to do some more in-depth videos on because I do love them. I just don't really wear them on camera as often. Next, I did a whole video on a battle of the BB creams to find my favorite. And the Wasso by Shiseido, Color Smart Day Moisturizer Oil Free Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen. I can't even speak it is that long. Is beautiful. I'm not going to harp too much on this because I did do a full dedicated video to this, but it is color adapting. It is oil free. It wears really beautifully and it is just nice. Like plain and simple, it just wears so nicely on the skin that you cannot go wrong. Next from Sephora, this is the Super Matte Moisturizer. I use this under makeup now officially like all the time. This is my go-to daily moisturizer. I do like something a little thicker and more nourishing on the skin at night, but it is a like traditional jelly type lotion, gel E, like G-E-L, not like jelly, J-E-L-L-Y. It does not leave a color behind once you put it in but it does help to control oil and shine. I've been testing out a bunch of different mattifying primers and pairing this with my old combination, I stay shine free a whole lot longer than I used to, so it definitely works. I picked these up off of a recommendation from Raw Beauty Christie. They are the Nova Lashes from the Makeup Shack. They are so beautiful, and I think the thing that is so stunning about them, like you can get this shape in about a million different lashes. They're not super exciting. But if you look really closely, and you're not going to be able to see on camera, the tips of the hairs are blue. So anytime I've been doing blue looks or something super neutral, and I'll do like a blue lower lash line, I will throw these lashes on just to give myself that oomph. I am doing a video, and you guys will see this coming in a couple weeks, which I will be featuring one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. This is the Desert Oasis from BH Cosmetics. But I'm doing five looks out of this palette as requested by someone on Twitter. And I love doing a super neutral look with this blue on the waterline. I will be pairing that with the lashes that have the blue tips because it is just that beautiful. While I'm on the subject of BH Cosmetics, I did recently grab for, and I have been using lately, my Studio Pro BH Cosmetics contour palette. I've just been using this for brightening, bronzing, contour. I have been doing a lot more drugstore stuff off camera because I am putting my thoughts together for some drugstore favorite videos, some favorite at the drugstore, some drugstore starter kit videos, basically a bunch of videos all surfacing around drugstore products. And this, oh my God, I forgot how much I love this. It goes on beautifully. It wears beautifully. It's just one of those products that you can really get behind. Plus, it is super affordable. Like for 10 shades, 
at this would be like triple to quadruple the price if you were to get it from a Sephora brand. But the fact that it, I think this was like $18 or something, always a coupon at Ulta. I probably paid $11 for it, all things considered. So next, I also did in last month's full face of first impressions, I tested the next four products. Well, I tested like 30 products, but these are the four that I keep continuing to grab for. The first is the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. This is such a stunning palette. I know it doesn't look very heavily used because I, I mean, it is, let me see if you guys can see that. I am definitely pretty gentle with my pans when I use a palette. So I don't go like hard into it. I will tap my brush in very slightly and build it up. So I have worn this about eight times this month and it is just such a beautiful, like, the reason I have my BH palette out is because that's a little more cool tone. This is a little more mauve and warm. And those two palettes have basically been all I've been reaching for all month. So it is a little bit more of a high price point. It is $65. But I don't think these, nothing on the market will mimic what these foiled shades will do. I'm just going to swatch this one. Look at how beautiful that is. It just has this sheen and pearl to it where it catches the light in the most beautiful way. I am trying to find a shadows that do as much as this one does. And honestly, it, it, it doesn't exist. They are just the most beautiful shimmery shades. The mattes are kind of run of the mill for matte shades, but for this foil right here, and they have that same formula in five different shades, like you cannot go wrong. Next from Laura Mercier, this is the Caviar Volume Panoramic Mascara. I continue to reach for this. The Double Helix Wand is really good for getting like a nice curl on your lashes. It evenly coats pretty much all your lashes. I can't speak to it on the lower lash line because you guys know I don't really do mascara on the lower lash line. But for my upper lashes, I feel like it might be the first volumizing mascara that I don't need to take my roller lash through. All of the other ones I have tried or used ever, I still have to like take a coat of roller lash right through the lashes just to separate and add a little bit of curl. This one I can actually use on their own. I still do prefer my roller lash when I just want some curl, but overall, like for that just nice voluminous on a day you don't want falsies, it is beautiful. Next up from Super Goop, this is the Invisible Setting Powder. It's an SPF 45. This is such a cute packaging that these, I'm setting an eyeshadow, that this just has powder in the brush. I used it to set my face that day and I don't love the way it works as a just a strict setting powder but this has turned into my touch-up powder throughout the day I keep it in my makeup carry bag or really just on me so if I need to take down the shine throughout the day I'll just take this and just lightly pat in and all it does is take down the shine and add a little bit of extra SPF you can never go with too much sunscreen I mean you can I would be careful but for me, where protecting my skin is very important, finding a good travel sunscreen that you can use to touch up and add a little extra SPF is going to be helpful for maintaining sun protection all day long. And the last favorite is from Tarte. This is the Rainforest of the Sea Sweet Life Liquid Sea Glass. It is, and I'm going to put it just so you can see next to that Huda shadow. This is a liquid suspended glitter. Very similar to the Stila, but they're just so... St Actually, it kind of matches what I have on today. I'm going to add a little bit on top of what I already have on. Look how easy that was for just bumping this look up a little bit more. It's just so easy. It is so effortless. And it just gives you that barely there but still wet look on the lid. It's definitely very wet and frosty and a little bit on the glittery side. But compared to like the Stila, it's less in your face glitter and a little bit more of just this beautiful wet lid effect. I really love that. So much more now. <laughs> All right. For my flops, I normally only have like one or two every month. This month I actually have four. So the first, this is from Supergoop as well. This is the 100% Mineral Sunscreen in Broad Spectrum SPF 40. This is a smooth and poreless primer. It does have a little bit of a tint to it, but this broke me out. I did this in the Full Face of First Impressions, 
And I broke out a couple days after that and, well, for the next couple days after that video. And I wasn't sure the product in there because I did try a new foundation and concealer. After much deliberation and testing a lot of things out separately, this was the culprit. I actually tried it again a couple days ago and there we are. So I need to not use this because it will break me out. I did mention in a video a while back that I'm pretty sensitive to most sunscreens, both physical and chemical. From SPF in general, like you have to use what's good for your skin. I do love that powder, but this one just broke me out. This is actually a really weird. This is the Marbled Beauty Blender. You guys know I am a fan of the Classic Beauty Blender sponge. Normally, I think it's a conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory that they all do different things, but when I used this one, I noticed my foundations, especially foundations I knew and loved, just didn't apply the same way my other ones did. I went back and picked up a solid pink one, and my foundation went back to working again. I then tried this the next day, didn't work out. So it's weird, right, that one of these won't work, but the others will. I don't get it. I've never had an issue where one color worked and one didn't. You guys see I use a different one depending on whatever. But I found that this one did not apply my makeup as well. So definitely a fail for me. Like, are they different? Is there a different in the per porosity? Porosity? In how porous it is? Like, what's the difference? I need to know because I find it so weird that these two products, which are seemingly identical, well, this one's wet, but minus the color, seemingly identical, and it doesn't work. What is that about? And the last item from Maybelline, this is the Master Contour Sculpt, and it's a face kit. It's got a highlight, a blush, and a contour. When Maybelline makes highlighters like this, how the hell can they put something like this on the market and call it a highlighter? I'm gonna swatch them, just so you can see, because we're shiny anyway. Clean finger, one. That's all I did, and we're gonna put that right here. It is beautiful, it is blinding, it is stunning. Like, just look at the color on that. And then I'm gonna go into this one on a different finger, and I'm gonna put that right next to it, and it is a powdery mess. Like, it doesn't actually do anything. I tried to use it on my under eye just to be like, maybe it's an under eye brightening powder, and it says it should be brightening and not highlight. Looks like crap. So. One of the three doesn't even work. The blush is not quite pigmented enough to actually get anything out of. I do like the contour shade, but honestly, am I going to pay $12, or should you pay $12, to use one shade in a trio? Just not smart in my book. This was a fail. Not something I'm going to enjoy. Not something I'm going to use again. And the last item, which I'm kind of keeping in a category by itself, this is the Defense Refresh Setting Mist and Broad Spectrum SPF from Supergoop. It's a collaboration with Rebecca Taylor. I did mention in that video, excuse me while I just shake this, that my mister was not working. So I did actually reach out to the company and they sent me a brand new one. And I checked the nozzle on that one. And it still like squirts out in an inconsistent way. So like the way that it wears on, this is literally like, like, you see the little droplets on my hand? Like, it is literally squirting like a jet stream. The second one had the exact same problem. So I did empty one into a different spray bottle, and I love the formula. But this spray nozzle is not it. So you can actually, like, I popped it off. And this is my Murad spray bottle. It is the same type of mister. And when I put this on here... The mister was beautiful, and it is such a beautiful setting spray. But I have to switch the nozzler to make it work. So yeah, packaging is a zero out of 10. It did not work for me. But the formula is so nice. So like, I'm torn. I don't want to tell you to buy something where the packaging makes it hard to use. Like if you have an empty setting spray bottle somewhere, you can definitely make something like this work. If you do not, I don't think it's worth it just because you're not going to be able to make this work until you have another bottle to put it in. So, I mean, all things considered, you can pick up a, like, travel bottle like this. I got that one for, like, $3 at Sally's. I use this. This holds my brush cleaner. So while I'm, like, here, I can just squirt and clean a brush. But you can definitely put a setting spray in something like that. If you're willing to do that, this is a really good idea to pick up because, again, it is SPF. It's in a setting spray. It's got a beautiful lavender scent. 
maybe you'll be lucky and yours won't be squirting you in the face, but mine did. Undesirable, not a fan. So this is kind of like, it's not a fail, it's not a flop, it's kind of in limbo, but I needed to tell you about it because I love the product, but this squirter is not it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, let me know down below what are some of the products this month you've been loving. Your recommendations are how I kind of pick what I should be trying next month and throughout the month, every month. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye.